a stain. You have long sleeves on. Are you expecting cold weather? Yeah, it was cold this morning. It was about 43 out uh, here. I have the top down in my car. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. When I get Person, out there, I have the heat. I'll strip down to nothing. I have the heat on in the car too, though. But <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, you've got the heat on. Well, I don't have. You know, I have a skirt on, so I don't have anything on my legs. So I the heat's on my legs, good. and then the seat. The heat's on the seat. She, she's like it's as if she's living in Alaska. We made a trip to Alaska several years ago, and it was. The longest day of the year, June 21, was during the time we were there. But yet the temperature in Anchorage and down toward Homer was, it didn't get above, get above 60, and that was only for about an hour every day. The rest of the time was 50 to 55, but all kinds of motorcyclists out in t shirts. Anybody with a convertible they had on the top was down. I mean, that's their, their hot season. So for Laura, there as long as the sun's shining, yeah, she'll put the top down. Uh, and as I was walking in, you had. Top down, heat on. Yeah. That's hey, pretty, it's a beautiful fickle. day, my gosh. We're not going to have too many of these left. i got to take advantage of it. All week we're going to have this. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's supposed great? to be good. Nice. So, so I, as I walked into your uh, spacious office here, yeah. I uh, heard that it was Plush. a PSA for uh, Dahlem Center. Yes. And I, it's interesting. I have a, a friend of mine at Starbucks, Tom Hunstorfer, uh, whose wife is the dean of students at Albion. And uh, Tom, every morning uh, before he comes to Starbucks, he walks at Dahlem Center. Uh, there you go. And walks the trails out there. He says it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's nice out there. Have you not been out there? I have. I've been to Dahlem Center. I haven't walked the trails, but he said it's it's absolutely spectacular with the wildlife, everything. What time does really he nice. go? He goes at dawn. Just he actually before dawn uh, now because the days are getting shorter. And uh, so, what time is that? Because my eyes are closed. Before right dawn. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, Are we talking five o'clock? Uh, well, no, 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 no. He's not out five o'clock. Let's see. We were at Starbucks at eight o'clock this morning. I, I would say he's out there about six thirty, seven yeah. o'clock so this far? morning. I he walks away. So, you know, he's a thin, fit guy. So uh, yeah, but he goes to Dallum Center uh, every morning. He also he, he volunteers and now is working part time at the homeless shelter in Ann Arbor. So. I think the days that he's Does he know we have a homeless shelter here in Jackson? I don't know the answer to that. Where's the homeless shelter here? The interface shelter. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's just been we doing We donate it. to it. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't know, he goes in, he's been going in there for years. I'm just sitting here. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, it's been a usually I'm morning already, right? Yeah, it has. Yeah. yeah. No, Tom also, he, he goes... It's been uh, tense. <laughs> he, he, he tense <laughs> in here. There was a little stress. A little, uh, he does Habitat for Humanity. Uh, at least the, typically once a year, he's going to Guatemala to help build uh, these ovens. And you should have brought him in. Hey, well, yeah, there you go. There's should a, I? You know, that's probably not a bad idea. He's a, he's a, he's a very interesting guy. Chat about the beauty of the community. All right. Okay. He lives in Albion, though, but he does come to the so. Anyway. Hold it. Now, no, wait. So wait, he hold, time out. He lives in Albion and yeah. he walks at the Dallum Center? Yeah. Every morning. Every morning? Every and morning. then goes to Starbucks. Yeah, and then goes to Starbucks. And then back to Albion or over to Ann Arbor? What's he, back, back what's, to Albion. What's he doing in Jackson? He's going uh, to the Dallum there, Center there, and there, Starbucks. There are at least two attractions here for him, the Dallum Center and Starbucks. <laughs> why? No, why, why does that surprise you? Because he lives in Albion. What's he doing in Jackson? Uh, okay. Then they just say this a minute ago, two attractions, Dollar Center and Starbucks. So he drives to Jackson to walk? Yeah. At the Dallum Center. He must be impressed by the Dallum Center. Oh, he is, very much so. Wow. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah, he loves it out there. He says it's absolutely spectacular. Oh, they have that new walk, that new path, that multimodal. Or, 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 or to quote Donald that. Trump, it's just huge out there. It's it's a huge place. <laughs> huge, really huge. <laughs> I've been working on my Do you think there's nowhere to walk in the Russia? audience? Uh, I don't know. He just likes it, and he comes over to Starbucks, uh, and he's a very dutiful husband. He gets his his wife these iced teas and stuff. He's a really nice guy, and a very. Have you ever? Uh, he's one of the most. Have you ever thought about taking notes from him then, if he's a dutiful husband? <laughs> Not that I don't drink tea. Nor hey, do I did drink the Lions win or lose yesterday? Oh my! Did they win or lose yesterday? Go there. Okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to change the subject. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I can't figure out why this guy lives in Albion and he comes over here for coffee. No, I should sell him a house here in Jackson, exactly. right? Exactly. I'm sure there's something out well, by no, the Dallas Center for sale. His wife Sally is the dean of students at Albion. She's got an absolutely wonderful position over Where does there. she live? What? In Albion. <laughs> okay. uh, there's got to be some reason. It's you, Monday morning. I'm Why would lost. you come to Jackson to walk? Um, 
Because I'm, I'm nothing glad. against the Dallum Center. It's no, a, I'm glad. I'm glad he does because we have wonderful conversations at the back table in Starbucks. It, he must plan. He must Friday say, "I'm going to go to Starbucks in Jackson." So, well, there's twenty probably, miles away. But there's not a Starbucks. Is there a Starbucks in Albion? No, I, probably. You know, no, no I don't think I there would is. think you could get coffee there somewhere. Yeah, but it's Star. Well, it's you know Starbucks what? Starbucks coffee. people are 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 weird. Finicky. Yeah. Snob. Well, I know they're weird. They're snob. Yeah. 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 Coffee stuff. Right. Okay. No. But, but well, but uh, that is interesting that he comes all the way over here. Uh, that's a story in itself. Well, you know, Rod Melly got to glom onto that and use him. Malloy. To... Oh right, right. <laughs> oh, Rod where you going with that? Right. Rod, Rod Malloy. Sorry, sorry. Well, at least Rod Melly got a shout out. This <laughs> right, <day>. exactly. <laughs> In an inadvertent shot, that, they, you know that's that's butt dialing in a different fashion. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm gonna figure that one out. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Perfect. All right. So, are we talking real estate today? We're we just gonna talk about Dallas Center. Bill, would you and Starbucks drive to Albion and go walk? Huh? <laughs> He doesn't. Well, he does. That, that, that's a perfect, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Duh. Yeah, no, I would not drive that. Well, okay. But it's, it's places like the Dallum Center that add value to our community. Sure. Just like making a one-way street, a two-way street adds that's, value to that, the community. That's what Tom must think. Yeah. Well, true. And probably if his wife wasn't the dean of students at LVN, maybe they'd live in Jackson. You might as well live here. Just go to work well, they, she may have a residency requirement. I don't know. Don't look at me. I have no clue. All Maybe I know is she's, she might be better at her job as a result of living close to the university, the could college. Be. Could the college. be. Well, no, I'm sure that's the case. I sure. mean, you get calls in the middle of the night right. and says so some student is in trouble or something like that. So, yeah, right. no, I know that. But just in, in closing on this very yeah. fascinating subject. It is. Tom, Half the show's over. Tom, yeah, no, Tom, Tom's, Tom's a wonderful guy, one of the most compassionate, nicest You know, and I, I don't know. doubt that a bit. Okay. I just... You're baffled. Uh, common sense is... You're, you're living in a world of bafflement this morning. biting at my kneecaps here. <laughs> What's going on? Better than the woman that got bitten by a, or got bitten by a, a Massasauga rattlesnake over at the Map Eye Center a few days ago. Who knew? Yeah, uh, well, when you're walking barefoot off the trail, it's, and they tell you that there's something like 12 Massasauga rattlesnake nests on the property, it's a little bit, it's probably not surprising. At any rate, real estate. What do you want well, to talk about? Well, that's all. I mean, do you think the Dallum Center doesn't sit on land? That's real estate. Kind of. Yeah, okay. It's part of our community. Sure. Not for sale. Adding, no, but just it adds value. Yeah, okay. Right. Very they good. also have a, uh, I think they have a, a school there, a preschool type of oh, program. Maybe. Yeah, they've got a lot of programs. Right, right, right. But I think the preschool thing is a kind of a new. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we were talking about riparian rights last week. I was actually thinking about talking about what. Uh, you're doing home improvements, uh, dealing with a contractor. Well, since you were talking about the the Dallum Center, what about... Uh, I wasn't talking did... about it. Greg started off with a PSA. No, well... Go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to be argumentative. Really? Since when? <laughs> Can I, I, would you uh, send me that clip that says he doesn't mean to be argumentative? Speaking of the Dallum Center. I'll, 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 I'll make that, that his ringtone. Speaking of the Dallum Center, I was trying to turn over a new leaf. That was it. <laughs> no, now no, that no. it's autumn. Go ahead. But what about protective species when you're um, trying to develop a piece of property? In fact, didn't we have, weren't they searching for our property on uh, Skip Lake? Weren't they looking for some butterfly or trying to make a butterfly? Mitchell's sadder butterfly. A butterfly that is so weak it really can't fly. It just sort of meanders around on really? grasses. Yeah, yeah, Mitchell's sadder, Mitchell's sadder butterfly is a you know, protected species. And they're, they, they found a location in southern Michigan. I mean, they won't tell you where it is when I say they, the DEQ. And the DNR won't tell you where it is because they don't want people going out there who are butterfly collectors to collect the Mitchell Sander butterfly and diminish the population of butterflies. They are but, endangered? Yeah, they are an endangered species. Yeah, and I look, who I know. I know, and how do you well, determine if they're endangered? Or, I mean, oh, well, you yeah, know, well, no, the butterfly? The butterfly. Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> They'll flap all day long about it, right? You have state. Uh, I'd say this show has run the gamut. <laughs> right, right, right. You think this will make that a win? Everything but real you estate. Think, you think that oh, everything has to do with real estate? It does, kind of. 
May I interject something here? Well, you why can. you certainly am <laughs> well, doing it all morning? No, <laughs> why I, would you I, stop I now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me while I interrupt. Whatever. Do you mind if I speak while you interrupt? And whatever. Okay. That's the, the line. Uh, yeah, Mitchell Satter butterfly. You've got uh, salamanders. You have all kinds of species that are protected under either or both state and federal law. Uh, you've got species that are endangered, uh, species that are threatened, different classifications or categories of, uh, of uh, flora and fauna that you need to be concerned about if you're going to build on, uh, build or develop property. Yeah, we encounter it all the time. So do you have, so if I buy a piece of property and I'm going to build, do I have to look to see if I'm going to, what do I have to do? do under I most circumstances, no. They, and most people who are buying a parcel of vacant land, unless you're out uh, in the countryside, you're buying a tract of land on a lake, a tract of land with uh, wetlands. Uh, if you're buying a property with wetlands on it, you would certainly hire a wetland consultant to do what's called a wetland delineation, not a wetland review. There's a difference between that. What's the difference? That sounds expensive. Uh, it ain't cheap, uh, but it's very worthwhile because the instant you start uh, doing anything in a regulated wetland, filling it, dredging it, changing it, uh, about putting this? rocks, putting, doing anything within a regulated wetland, you have almost certainly violated the state wetlands uh, law and probably the federal wetlands law under a case that actually, they went to the Supreme Court, arose from a situation in Michigan where a, a person in central Michigan up near Midland filled 54 acres of wetlands and the case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the U.S. Supreme Court held that almost every drop of water, uh, every, every stream, every river, every rivulet, every pond uh, is under federal wetland jurisdiction as well as state for the reason that that water in that river, stream, etc., ultimately reaches the Great Lakes, which is a federally navigable body of water. And there's a huge controversy over where the regulation of the feds ends. And, and pretty much it's just uh, the only place it ends is if it, you've got a body of water which is uh, suspended or a, what do we call a lens where it doesn't drain into the Great Lakes. But almost everything else drains into the Great Lakes. And if the feds want to exercise jurisdiction, they can. Michigan has a really strong wetlands law and a very, very good uh, regulatory agency in the DEQ. So the feds rarely intervene in Michigan, but you can't ignore them. But my, my point is, if, if you're buying a parcel of property that has wetlands or is on a lake, uh, now you start, we started this conversation over endangered species. Most properties are not going to have endangered species of either flora or fauna, but occasionally you encounter it in tracts of land which are out in the countryside. So yeah, yeah and as you're right, you're right on Skiff Lake when we wanted to put in a boardwalk and a boat launch on Skiff Lake, uh, we had to deal with the Mitchell Satter butterfly. And what happens is when you file your application for permit, the DEQ asks for comments from the DNR, and the DNR will say, yes, we believe that this is habitat suitable for the Mitchell Satter butterfly in our instance, and therefore we had to hire a, uh, a butterfly specialist. No. A, yeah, an, an, an entomologist uh, from Michigan State to come out and do a uh, survey to determine whether the Mitchell Satter butterfly was there. And you can only do the survey during a... Come on. No, 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 there's nothing wrong with this. Seriously, Greg. I, no, I, I, yeah, look, I mean, I represent owners and developers, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer in and proponent of the environmental laws and regulations that we have. I really, I really am. You can, and actually my developer clients, virtually all of them, have realized that they can use the protected wetlands and, and lakes, et cetera, to their advantage as a, a, an amenity for their developments. Um, so no, I, I don't uh, begrudge those classifications of endangered species. I mean, we're sitting on uh, our deck up in, in northern Michigan uh, twice now this year. The first time uh, the, there's a bald eagle couple, uh, male and female, out on Tawas Point. They flew 50 feet in front of me as I'm sitting on my porch uh, enjoying a libation in the evening. And then the net, a, week, a week later, the, the male bald eagle, I see him out in front and he swoops down and he's actually on the water, which I didn't know bald eagles could do. It lands on the water. He's on the surface of the water for at least 20 seconds and then emerges with a, a 
large fish in his talons takes off, followed by two seagulls that are hoping he's going to drop that fish somewhere en route. So, I mean, our laws are actually working to protect these these species. But anyway, back to the to the. Good to know that there were two bald eagles. That yeah. way, they can have another. Well, they were almost uh, rendered extinct by virtue of the use of DDT back in the uh, 40s and 50s until it was Rachel uh, who wrote uh, Silent Spring. Uh, and that resulted in the banning of DDT and the, the resurgence or reemergence of a number of species. No, but so anyway, so you, you, you when you find show that kind of has a nature theme. It does today. today. Well, that's right. Yeah. I yeah. spun off that down center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rod owes me for all this. <laughs> Amber didn't. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, there are times when when the regulations become overly burdensome. Uh, and we deal, I, I deal with this all the time, where you, know, you have to deal with the bureaucracy and getting through it, and sometimes it's just awful. It's but on balance, I'd rather have the regulations to be able to provide the protection. And, you know, again, if you know how to work through all of the, the mm -hmm. process, it's not, it's not that bad. It's for people who don't understand the process who, or who are just going to say, I own this property, I get to do what I want with it, and then they violate the law. I mean, I do an awful lot of defense work, both civil and criminal, for people that are alleged to have violated the uh, environmental laws. So, yeah. So, if somebody sells you that property, is, do they have to disclose or? All the, well, if, if the property contains hazardous materials, this is apart from wetlands, etc., they and they know that it has hazardous materials. There's a statute that says they must disclose. But as far as wetlands are concerned, as far that, as wait, the need for a permit... Wait, do they only have to disclose if it's uh, residential or... Oh, what any, if it's, no. Any real property in the state of Michigan, residential or commercial, if there is hazardous... Is if, if, if you know there are hazardous substances on the property, you have an absolute statutory duty to disclose. So if there's a, a well that's already cleaning the property and they don't disclose it, that's kind of you mean obvious. it's contaminated, but they have a, a monitoring well doesn't clean the property, but they're doing something to, to clean the property. Correct. If it's contaminated, they have a duty to disclose. Mm -hmm. But if it's wetlands, or if you need a permit to put in a dock, whatever it may be, they don't have the, the seller does not have a responsibility to disclose that. That's right. the purchaser's responsibility. Because that's to probably determine. nature, right? No, because it's a wetland is it's obvious. It's not a, right. a latent defect. It's not a latent condition. It's a patent condition. And if you're if you I hate to say it like this. This is not the. If you're too stupid to know that there are wetlands and that are regulated in the state of Michigan, shame on you. Um, but there are plenty of people who. It's a, that, that's a bad way to put it. That is because some people, I think, put uh, sand in their uh, on the bottom of their lake, which you have to have a permit to do that. Yeah, but right? you, that, you, that a lake isn't a wetland, and in most circumstances, you apply for the permit to do sanding of an area uh, underwater, not not on the landward side where it's a wetland, if it's a wetland, but in the lake, uh, you, generally you can get a permit to sand. And what you do is you, you need to put a barrier down and they'll give you a prescribed area, maybe it's 40 feet by 20 feet, and you do this in the winter time, you put a barrier on the ice, uh, you know, uh, a, well, I a don't, membrane. But I, the, the, let me, the let me, point let, of it all Let is. me finish, a membrane, and then you put sand over the top, and then when the ice melts, it sinks to the bottom. But the point of it all is that I don't think everybody knows that. Otherwise, they wouldn't need an attorney to get them out of the jam once they knew it. All I can say is thank God they don't know it. Thank yeah. God they get the jam. Right. I mean, it's no different than putting a dock out or something like that. Who knows whether well, it's going to be permanent or... Yeah, well, a, a temporary seasonal structure dock I'm entitled to do if I have the rights to the, the body of water. And again, I have to exercise those rights reasonably, et cetera. We started down that path last week, but didn't get there. And then today, we got tied up on the Dollum Center. Well, there you go. Right. Um, I have a buyer who is looking for a house with association access to Columbia, Lake Columbia. So, if there are anybody, if there's anybody out there listening that knows of someone who's uh, should be or is about to be selling their property that's association access at Lake Columbia, uh, please give me a call and we can discuss if it's the right house for this particular buyer. Um, we have a price reduction on 6190 6200 Spring Arbor Road, which is a 30-acre parcel with commercial zoning in the front end right there on M60. M60, right? Um, it's reduced down to 213160 Nice piece of property, three buildings, although I know one of them should come down. And then um, 
We've got 502 Orange Street at 49.9, two bedroom, <coughs> one bath, over 1,000 square feet. 3420 Lookout Circles, 164.9, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, over 2,000 square feet. Beverly Park Place, 750 Beverly Park Place, 131.9, three bedrooms, one and a half baths, uh, 1,900 square feet. And oh, 805 Southwest Avenue, 164.9, four bedrooms, two full baths, two half baths, 2,500 square feet. That's a really nice brick tutor. So call me, 780-3800.